Hello everyone! A lot of people requested this game, so here it is. I don't know if it's really the last Queen Sacrifice of 2017, but until I'm proven wrong, I'm just gonna go with it. Uh, from 31st of December to 3rd of January, Wei Yi, the Chinese Grandmaster, is playing against uh, the number one Czech Grandmaster, David Navara. It's a chess match, it's a four-game chess match, and the winner of this match will be given uh, $20,000. The loser will also get $10,000, so it's not a bad deal. Uh, even if you lose, you get $10,000. The match is being played in Yancheng in China, and uh, so far they've already played three games. Today was the third game. The result is uh, one and a half each, and tomorrow is the final game. Uh, if tomorrow will be a draw, then they will go into tie breaks, but I will uh, put the, the details of the match in the description below so you can check it out. Uh, so let's see this game. Wei Yi has the white pieces, and it's, uh, it's really a wild game. Uh, we have E4 and C6 by Navara. Uh, for all you uh, Karo Khan enthusiasts. d4, d5, and e5, the advanced variation of the Karo Khan. Bishop to f5, and here uh, I thought that someone of Wei Yi style would definitely go for g4, something like g4, the, the, the bayonet's attack, but uh, uh, in fact he goes for knight to d2. We have e6 and knight to b3. It's an interesting idea. I don't think I've ever seen a Karo Khan being handled this way. Uh, the knight uh, will be very useful here, as you'll see in the game. Knight to d7, we have knight to f3, a6 now, bishop to e2, and c5. And here c3 was played, h6, and now d captures on c5 by Wei Yi. And the bishop captures on c5. And this is the idea behind this knight to b3 opening. Uh, if you play knight captures on c5 here, if you don't want to give up the bishop pair, uh, then knight can come, knight f to d4, and after bishop moves to g6, white can castle, and it's a wonderful position for white. Uh, white is already threatening f4, f5 to break open the position, the black king is still stuck in the middle. Uh, if black captures on b3, you can even play a, a captures on b3, then you get an open a file for your rook. So it's uh, quite a dangerous position. Uh, so after d captures on c5, uh, Navara plays uh, bishop captures on c5. Uh, we have knight captures on c5, sorry about that, uh, and knight captures on c5, and bishop to e3, now attacking the knight on c5. Uh, rook to c8, and uh, here Wei Yi castles. We have knight to e7, uh, knight to d4, and here no bishop to g6 or anything like that, simply castles. Uh, Navarra doesn't mind if Wei Yi captures the bishop on f5, simply knight captures on f5 will come, and... Uh, that knight will be pretty much uh, stuck there on f5. I mean, it's a great square for the black knight, for the dark knight. Uh, only way white will be able to kick it away is either by capturing it with a light square bishop or by pushing g4. Uh, so we have a4, uh, bishop to h7, and a5 now. Uh, knight to c6, we have knight captures, uh, rook captures as d5 pawn was attacked, uh, and bishop to d4. Uh, Navarro plays queen to g5, bringing the queen into the attack. Uh, and rook to a3. A more safer, a safer approach would be something like f3. Okay, this is a bit counterintuitive. You do block your queen and bishop with the f3 pawn, uh, but then again, you deny the knight this very important e4 square. Uh, but okay, Wei Yi goes for rook to a3. Probably with ideas of playing something like c3 and rook to g3 to bring the rook into the attack. Uh, Navarro plays queen to f5. Now he uh, brings more pressure to the d3 square, now the, the knight can jump to d3. Uh, b4, kicking the knight, but knight can come to d3 as we said, and the g4, uh, attacking the queen. Queen to g6, and now f4. Wei is now threatening f5, uh, the queen will be attacked after you capture on f5, uh, Wei will simply capture the knight on d3 as it will no longer be defended. So, queen to e4, not allowing f5 with tempo, and we have bishop to f3 attacking the queen, and here Navarra goes for it. He plays queen captures on f4, and he allows this, uh, it seems like a winning move for white, bishop captures on d5, but actually Navarra went for this uh, on purpose. Uh, e captures on d5, now giving up the queen. We have rook captures queen on f4, and the knight captures on f4. So giving up the queen for a bishop and a rook. Uh, doesn't really uh, give you, uh, like, uh, equality in material sense, but uh, his position is quite quite good. Uh, and here, uh, something like rook to b3, 
maybe preparing a move like b5 would be okay for white. Uh, but we played bishop to e3. He attacked the knight on, e on f4. Uh, knight to d3 now. The knight is protected by the bishop on, on, on h7. Uh, the threat is to capture the e5 pawn. And you really don't have a way of uh, defending that pawn. You can only play bishop back to d4. And this is what way he played. So basically, he just uh, wasted a move. That's not really something you want to do after black just sacrificed his queen. Uh, rook to e8, now with a double attack on the pawn. And queen to f3 now. Uh, if you capture the e5 pawn, uh, Wei Yi captures the d5 pawn. And Navarra goes for it, knight captures on e5, we have queen captures on d5, and now knight captures on g4. Uh, grabbing another pawn, and this is uh, this could have been a very important pawn in defending the white king. Uh, it would be hard to solidify, okay, you could play h3, but black could always just break open the position. Uh, rook to a1, uh, Wei Yi has to bring this rook back into the game. We have rook to g6. Now this rook to g6 comes with a threat of either knight to f6 check uh, or knight to e3 check picking up the queen. Uh, so we plays queen captures on b7, uh, grabbing that pawn and getting the queen out of the way. And we have knight to e3 check. And here uh, king to f2 is actually the only good move. If you play something like king to h1, uh, then this very annoying rook to g4 comes and... Uh, now there's a threat of uh, bishop to e4, uh, checking the king and also attacking the queen. But you can't really move the queen. If you move the queen, then bishop to e4 will be checkmate. Uh, so you don't really have any options here. If you capture, for example, bishop to e4 check, queen captures, rook captures. Uh, it's two rooks against the rook and the bishop easily winning position for black. Mm -hmm. So after this knight to e3, uh, king to f2 was played. Uh, now we have knight to g4 check, king back to g1. And now knight to e5 check. Uh, and here Navarra, play, uh, sorry, Wei played king to f1. And this was, it's not the losing move, but it definitely gives uh, Navarra more than he should have. Uh, a better move here is actually king to h1. The exact same move I just said that, that didn't work. But it didn't work when the, black, when the dark knight was on e3. Now that it's on e5, it actually works. Uh, now rook to g4 doesn't work because simply rook to e1. Uh, the rook is now guarding the e4 square. When the knight was on e3, the rook couldn't guard the e4 square. So here, after something like f6, okay, you do defend the knight, but uh, white is white is winning here. He can Black doesn't really have a threat, and white can simply push b5, a6, a7, a8. Uh, but after this knight to e5 check, uh, king to f1 by Navarro, uh, by Wei Yi. We have rook to f6 check, king to g2, and now rook back to g6 check. And again, Navarra has the option of playing king to h1, but he plays king to f1. And we have rook to g5 here. Uh, bishop captures on e5, and now bishop to d3 check. King to f2, uh, rook captures bishop, we have rook to d1. And this rook to d1 is actually the losing move for Wei Yi. Uh, but you'll see why. <laughs> the, idea, <clears throat> the idea for uh, Wei Yi here is to play queen to c8 check. Uh, and only after king moves to h7, only then move the rook. But you'll see why. Uh, after rook to d1, <coughs> Navarra played rook to e2 with check. Uh, we have king to f3, now rook to f5 check, king to g4, uh, h5 check. We have king to king to h4, and now rook to e4 check. Uh, and in this position, uh, we resigned the game. But as you can see in this position, uh, there would there wouldn't have been rook to f5 check if queen to c8 check was played first before rook to d1. Uh, then rook couldn't come to f5, and none of this would actually work for black. It would probably be some sort of a draw. I mean, the game the game would continue, but uh, there would be no immediate win for David Navarra. Uh, but okay, uh, he played rook to d1, so king to g4, h5 check, king to h4, rook to e4 check in this position where he resigned the game. Uh, what would follow is something like king to g3, uh, rook to e3 check, and now uh, it depends really. If you play something like king to g2, then simply bishop to e4 check, picks up the queen, uh, queen captures, rook captures, <coughs> and uh, it's two rooks against uh, two rooks against the rook. Uh, also something uh, Jan Gustafsson often says, uh, uh, his favorite kind of endgame is the one where <laughs> where he has a rook and his opponent doesn't. Uh, but after rook to e3 check, instead of king g2, you could also play something like king to h4. Uh, but then comes g5, you have to capture on h5, king captures on h5, bishop to e2 check, king to h6, and rook to h3. This is checkmate. 
So a, a very nice game by David Navarra, a very brave game. The queen sacrifice wasn't exactly crushing, uh, but uh, it, it was a, it was an active game, and uh, he managed to pull it off. Uh, we didn't uh, didn't maneuver with the king the way he should have, but uh, you know it's always hard when it's an open position and your king is running loose. So that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any other uh, games featuring a nice queen sacrifice between grandmasters played on the 31st of December, do share in the comments. Uh, but until then, this is uh, the last queen sacrifice of 2017. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.